Joining me now to discuss that and many more things is Mark Short, uh, assistant to the president and White House director of legislative affairs. Mark, thanks so much for joining us from very, very far away this afternoon. I'm not sure whether or not you've had a chance to see the pictures of Kim Jong-un walking around this city behind me, being cheered and celebrated as he walks. This is a man who's a brutal dictator, you know, accused of many human rights abuses. Do human rights need to be part of this meeting in just a few hours? Uh, I think they do, John. I, th I appreciate CNN showing the uh, the Wambier family's uh, plight. I think that uh, the president was honored to have them as his guests of the State of the Union. As you mentioned, the vice president has been in regular contact with the family, and certainly they will be on the hearts and minds, not just the president, but Ambassador Bolton, Secretary Pompeo, and the entire delegation. And you can be assured that that's been a, that's been a driving force in negotiations to this point. You're correct. He has been a brutal dictator. He but has Mark, murdered political but Mark, opponents. Will he, yeah. but and I'm sorry for the delay. Yeah. I'm sorry for the delay. It'll be in the hearts and minds. And again, I don't doubt that for a second. But will the president raise it with Kim? I think that the delegation has uh, been continually raising our human rights concerns with the president raises. I assume will be there, John. But I, I can't say that for sure from uh, this far away ahead of their meeting. That'll be up to the president to decide. Don't know for sure at this point. The president is departing Singapore, we understand, several hours after the meeting, a little earlier than perhaps we thought he would. The question is, why? Is it because Kim Jong-un announced that he's going to be leaving very shortly after the working lunch as well? I don't think it's that. I think that, honestly, uh, Secretary Pompeo, you heard him make his comments today in his press conference that uh, the discussions have, uh, have been moving rapidly, and I think that uh, hopefully there's, uh, there's progress to, to announce. I think that's the, the reason for an earlier departure. When you, when you say moving rapidly, you just use the word progress. Does moving rapidly mean moving better? Uh, John, I think that uh, there is uh, there's progress that uh, that they'll be announcing later. That's not for me to announce, but uh, certainly I think that uh, Secretary Pompeo has uh, laid a strong foundation. I think the reason we're at this point is because of the sanctions that this administration has brought, united more countries in, in opposition to where North Korea is, particularly in partnership with China, mm -hmm. that I think has uh, made a huge difference thus far. All right. Thanks so much for talking about North Korea. You, you, the delegation here is asleep, so I'm excited to get a chance to talk to someone at the White House about that. But well, let me I ask you, appreciate you about being trade, which is something. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Not easy. Let's talk about trade a little bit. Is it the official position of the White House now that there is a special place in hell for Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? I think that those are words that uh, I would not have chosen. I think that uh, the reality is that uh, the president felt that they'd had a productive meeting, that uh, you heard the president even make announcements there, that our ultimate goal is to have no tariffs and no barriers. But I think that there was uh, offense taken that once airborne on your way to, uh, to an incredibly important international summit that the Prime Minister of Canada chose to take to the podium to, uh, to condemn the actions of the United States. So that's clearly what was, what was a frustration. But no, I think that uh, the judgment day that separates us from heaven and hell is not dependent upon whether you agree with the president or not. So I don't think it's the official position. Having said that, John, I think that uh, we are still concerned about the tariffs and, and barriers that Canada has put on American goods and services. And, uh, and, and the president stood up for that. It's one of the reasons he was elected president is because he made it clear to the American voters that he was in a fight for American workers and provide even in fair trade well, deals. If he did feel all that, why did he agree to sign on to the joint statement to begin with? Was it just because of the words that Justin Trudeau used? I think that the president, as you heard him say, felt that uh, he'd had a good meeting. As you heard him say just a few minutes ago, I saw CNN re-air the, the report of him saying he felt like his relationship with the G7 leaders was a 10. So I think it was disturbing that once, as opposed to raising concerns there and in front of the president, waiting until airborne and on the way to Singapore to hold press conferences to do as Trudeau did. But, uh, but again, there is far more that binds us together with Canada. There's a lot that we appreciate in that relationship and the friendship, but there are also trade negotiations that have to happen and concerns that we have about uh, not having access to their markets. When you see tariffs on cheese and butter and milk that are between 250 and 300%, it's not looking to try to level the playing field. We want to have the playing field leveled for our farmers and producers here in America. So, but the, the field with Canada is pretty level. I mean, there is a trade surplus, a U.S. trade surplus with Canada, correct? Right. I've heard y'all have this, diff the, the 
um, announcement of goods and services and showing what that surplus is. And I think the president's focused on goods, so let's break that down. When you're talking about goods and products, agricultural products, manufacturing products, there is a significant deficit. When you add services, you're right, it levels out. But what that means is Canada well, could be paying a lobbyist lawyer in D.C. to help them with something that counts as a service. We're focused on making sure that the workers I, in America are getting the same balance. Well, workers of America, by the way, people who provide services could be dry cleaners. They could be consultants. They could be financial advisors. Yes, they could be lawyers as well. That's one of the, the nature biggest numbers of the one American of the biggest economy. Services, they, they, they're, one of workers, the biggest they, they're workers also. And I use and I use I use goods and services because yeah. that's what the trade representative's office uses, too, when it measures trade surpluses and deficits that, in other countries. That's right, John. But I think the president's made clear he wants to focus more on the good side of that equation. And I do use the lawyers because that is actually a larger percentage of the services. That is one of the biggest services that's provided. So that's why I'm using that as opposed to a dry cleaner, as you might use. I don't think there are many people coming across totally. the border to get their shirts dry cleaned. I think that's very different. Well, this is talking about lawyers. Well, it's not just lawyers. Again, it's, it, it's not just lawyers. And if you're going to talk about the tariffs, and the dairy tariffs are very high that Canada places on, on U.S. products. But what about American tariffs that they put on tobacco, for instance? American tariffs placed on shelled peanuts, American tariffs on paper clips. The U.S. does it too. In fact, you know, Canada on average actually has a lower tariff rate overall than the United States does. I think what the president said the other day is he wants us to fight to make sure that tariffs are reduced and eliminated and trade barriers are eliminated. In many cases, it's not just a matter of the tariffs, John, it's actually a provision that prevents you from actually bringing products into, into various countries, including Canada. So there are in many cases barriers that just even prevent us from selling. So there's a lot there that we need to work on. There's a lot that we're, the president's gonna keep fighting for. Mark Short, it's great to have you with us today. I do appreciate it from very, very far away. I know you'll be watching there just like we will the results of this historic meeting here. John, thanks for having me on.